If you're a web designer, I'm guessing collecting content from your web design clients is your most favorite aspect of the job, right? No, of course not. It's the worst. It's the bane of our existence as web designers. But the reality is there's a few things you can do to make this process way easier. So I'm going to share with you my top three tips for collecting content from your web design clients like a pro. Before we get to those, though, let me give you a tip on what not to do. What you don't want to do is just tell your client, hey, send me content because you know exactly where that leads, right? I know I remember very well. You just have them send you content and then what's gonna happen? You're gonna get 75 emails with one image attached to every email. They're gonna text you. They're gonna send you images and maybe like a Word doc that you gotta pull from. No, you do not wanna leave it up to your client to determine how they send you content, but you have to guide them. So tip number one is that you have got to educate your client on how where and when to send content. Otherwise, it's gonna be an utter disaster. So there's a few different ways you can educate your client. First off, I recommend having some sort of getting started page. Now, if you look here, this is the getting started page that I've used for years, which is basically just to prime clients for sending you content the way you need to. Now, I do recommend having a better uh, thumbnail for your getting started video if you have a walkthrough video, but this is what worked for me, it's all right. So I basically just told clients, hey, these are what we're gonna need to get a project started. Logo, hosting credentials, images and pictures. And then I let them know for content collection, we use Basecamp to manage the project. We can collect some content here and then we'll use Dropbox or you could use Drive or whatever you want for images and media files. Now there's another tool that we're gonna get to in a little bit, but having a getting started page is absolutely key when it comes to informing your clients, priming them on what to expect. You also need to let them know what type of formats that you're gonna accept. You don't want clients to send over a really small 100 pixel wide logo and expect it to look nice on retina screens for your website. So you need to make sure you educate your clients as much as possible with a getting started page and some onboarding resources for them. Whether you have them inside a tool, whether you have it in email templates, just let clients know the big three, when, where, and how to collect content. Number two is to set expectations. So I'm guessing you've had experiences like I had a lot early on as a web designer where the client checks in with you after a few weeks of them signing on and they say, hey, Josh, how's the website looking? And you say, uh, it's looking pretty blank. You haven't sent me any content. And the reality is, a lot of that is on the client to send you content, but it's also on you. You need to be the guide in educating them like we just talked about and now setting some expectations on collecting the content. So you need to take some ownership of collecting content, but obviously the client needs some ownership too. So you need to let them know the success of this project is gonna be determined on how quickly we get the content that you provide for us and if you meet your deadlines, the only way we're gonna meet the project deadline on time is if you meet your deadlines with sending us content. So give the client some ownership. Now, if you have a lot of content in a really big project, my recommendation is to phase it out for them a little bit. Just let them know we don't have to do all the content at once. We can do a little bit chunk by chunk, page by page, or section by section for the website. The other aspect that's really important when it comes to giving some ownership to the client is they need to know if they don't send content to you on time, then What's the penalty? What's the repercussions? If you have a late fee, which I, didn't, I generally recommend after 30 days or a certain amount of time, let them know, heads up, it's nothing personal, but if we don't get the content in time, there is a late fee charge because we gotta keep this client moving, this project moving. In some cases, it might be bumped to the back of the line, but you wanna avoid delayed payments for yourself for your web design business. So a late fee is typically the best way to go when it comes to making sure your client gets you that content on time. And then the last thing that I recommend doing when it comes to setting expectations is making very clear deadlines. So depending on how long your projects typically take and the scope and size of this project, give deadlines. You might say, okay, for the homepage content, you have a week. For the services pages, you've got another week. And then for the rest of the pages, we need content. And then the images that you provide us that we'll tweak from there. And then that might put us three or four weeks out. So you might have a month, for example, of really harsh deadlines to make sure your clients get them in time, get that content to you in time. So set those deadlines all within those expectations. And then tip number three is to empower your client. So you've educated them, they know what to expect, they've got very clear expectations, but now you gotta make sure that you actually empower them to get you that content in the format it's supposed to be in, in the best place, the most organized place to do it. So there's a few different ways you can empower your clients to, to give you that content on time. One thing I recommend doing is like I 
teach a lot of my web design students is if you're going to do something, you got to put it in the calendar. So tell your clients to like make it a project and you don't need to be harsh about it, but just let them know. I recommend blocking out a certain amount of time for a certain amount of content every week, depending on how much content you need and make it a project. Recommend that your clients put it in the calendar to make sure it gets done on time. Or you could even send your clients a calendar invite as to when the deadline for that aspect of the project content should be submitted by. There's also a tool that will help you out that we're about to mention, but you could do that manually as well. But either way, make it a project. Tell your clients to make it a project. And then as we just mentioned with expectations, if there's a lot of content, just tell them to phase it out. Phase one could be a certain chunk of the content. It'll give them quick wins and then they'll build some confidence and feel comfortable getting that content to you. And then if you do it in phases, that'll actually help the project go faster and smoother. That way it's not so overwhelming. Just remember, clients have a lot going on when th on their end when they're building a website. So you don't wanna overwhelm your clients, phase it out. And then finally, use a tool. Use a content collection tool. Now we've mentioned Basecamp. That's what I manage projects through. And I would generally accept some content through there unless it was media and big files, which I would do on Drive or Dropbox. But there's one tool that I use and I highly recommend for content collection specifically, and that is called Content Snare. Now Content Snare, if you're not familiar, literally was created for web design agencies to collect content. And the reason I love Content Snare is you can really make it a streamlined automated approach and it looks a lot like this you'll have different projects that you'll have in here and then you can literally customize it however you want and make it as simple or as complex as you want when it comes to collecting content you can have templates that you reuse you can set deadlines you can set email reminders i've been on the other end of the spectrum when i do presentations i've found that some summits i've been a part of use content snare and it's so nice for me as the client to be able to and as the customer to be able to know when the deadlines are for the content that i need to submit so it really is a win-win for everyone around if you're going to use a tool especially for big projects i recommend content snare i do have an affiliate link with them heads up but i know the owner of the company they are incredible joshhall.co slash content snare is where you can get a special deal to try content snare out especially for big projects but either way make sure you do those three things educate your clients to make sure they know when where and how to send content set those expectations with clear deadlines and make sure they know what's going to happen if they don't send content on time and then number three empower your clients give them all the resources they can to make it a smooth process it'll be a little bit of time in the beginning to get all that set up but every project after that will get smoother and smoother those are my top three tips for helping you collect content from your web design clients. If you have any more tricks up your sleeves, I would love to hear them. Drop a comment below where you're seeing this video and I would love to hear what's worked for you with collecting content. These are the things that has worked for me no matter what size the project it was, whether it was really small or really big in scope. I hope they help for you as well when it comes to collecting content. Check below for more resources that go a little more in depth on content collection. Those will be down below in the comments. But for right now, Cheers to making the next project better because you done made your content collection easier.